Hi, I'm Andrew Rellings and I'm Head of uh, Customer Operations at Alessin and you're watching CBIT Media. I'm in the Alassan office in Sydney, like the headquarter, the real center of um, a lot of development, right? Um, Most of the development, uh, yeah. And you are? Jens Schumacher, and I'm the group product manager for the developer tools here at Alassan. Okay, and we want to talk about the dev tools, um, which is? Yeah, start with Stash, Bamboo, Fisher Crucible, Clover, and of course, uh, Bitbucket and Sorcery as well. Let's focus on the, uh, one of the news, like Stash. Which is a rising star at last hand, isn't that? That's right, yeah. It's Why is that? Um, I think mostly because Git is a rising star. Mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's what, what we do with Stash. Stash is a Git repository management system. allows you to create Git repositories, manage them, uh, maintain permissions, maintain access to the repositories, and on top of that, collaborate with your team, do code reviews, um, give feedback on code, uh, identify problems in the code. Okay, so um, a lot of our customers, especially the big ones, uh, a lot of Subversion is still around. Um, so uh, why should I move from Subversion to Git? So there are the standard reasons that you usually hear when uh, somebody just talks about the technology, that you can clone the repository locally and then you have everything locally. You can work on a bus, you don't have Wi-Fi on a plane. Even we you had a, uh, a Skype mm. call like for yeah. I don't know, one and a half hour where you laid out all this uh, kind of... All of those, yeah. Yeah. And th those are the standard ones and the tool reasons. But um, I think as soon as you start working more with Git and understanding it better, that, that really goes into the background. Mm -hmm. It's really more about the, the workflow and the change of workflow and subversion. Um, everything, every development, all the development happens on, on, on truck, right? Mm -hmm. on, on one branch. Um, and merging... Some people use merges and, and branches and merges, but it just doesn't really work that well. That's where the merge hell and exactly. merge pain comes from, exactly. like in terms... Yeah. So there's a reason why everybody works on track, just because, mm -hmm. because of that. And, and uh, that goes away with Git? And with, that goes away with Git. So uh, branching and merging are core concepts to Git, and because it was uh, designed to be distributed in nature, mm -hmm. like the uh, Unix kernel, uh, Linux is developed on top of Git and developed mm -hmm. for and project, also right? from Linux yeah, servers, exactly. right? Linus yeah, so. in himself, right? To to make sure that the development for Linux works well, yeah. right? Um, now the guy has another very big project. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so it's been designed for that purpose, and that makes that means that it's first of all really easy to create a new branch. It's just like a mm -hmm. single command, branch is created, and then you can start working on it. And it's really easy to merge as well. And because of the way Git tracks changes, merge conflicts are much more rare than in other version control systems. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to wrap it up for a manager, um, correct me if I'm wrong, um, uh, Git means that uh, I have more collaboration uh, within my um, development team. This was probably the main goal. This is because I have better workflows, because I have uh, better control, and also like um, people can branch better and merge in the trunk um, more easily later. Mm -hmm. um, and when you do a pull request in, in Git, it's more of uh, you can uh, kind of really look at the code, do a review of the code, not that everybody has already put his code in the trunk, and then you say, oh, it, it works somehow, so yeah. let's just go and yeah, take care of quality later. I think code review, um, and I mean, of course we said Crucible and code review for uh, subversion was already relatively popular, but mm -hmm. a lot of teams still struggle to adopt it. Uh, we hear it over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that's mostly because it's not part of the process, right? Like you already put your changes on trunk and then afterwards you select some revisions that you want to review. And first of all, that review creation process is more tedious. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to find a good reason, well, I already committed it, it's already there, like do you really have to review it? Gets tested by the AI already, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, for pull requests, that code review process um, becomes part of your development process. So you develop your feature on the branch, and then once you're ready, once you're ready for your people to review it, for the, the other developers to review it, um, you basically indicate that you want to merge the changes. And then they can just review everything that happens on the branch in isolation. And, uh, and then when they're happy with the changes, you can commit it. If they're not happy with the changes, they just tell you so, and then you can commit further to the branch, update your branch, mm -hmm. and then review that again and commit when it's ready. Can you... Uh, 
tell about your implications at Atlassian for releases um, through this new kind of branch. Yeah. I think you call it feature branching, right? Yeah, exactly. So huh. the the workflow at Atlassian is that for every single Jira issue, we create a new branch. So whether it's a bug fix or even a type, it's, it's no trouble to create a branch. It's really easy to do, right? So no development happens ever on master on the main branch. Huh. And um, we developed some features uh, in the last six months to make that process even easier. So from within Jira, you can now say... There's this video. Can you, yeah. can you say again where I can so find that? There's a video on uh, atlassian.com slash uh, software hyphen development. Mm -hmm. And this is where the, the whole process is outlined. It's, so it's awesome. Yeah, like uh, They show how you go in Jira and say create new branch and then Stasha opens all everything's pre-populated and you can start coding away from in Source Tree or your IDE and then commit back. It's, it's pretty pretty easy for managers like me who don't know how to code to understand how how this all is one integrated yeah. workflow now. Yeah. Is, the, is that mocked, the no, video, or is it, is it uh, like... It's all live, right? Okay. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so we... Uh, it's all in the product now. You can, you can buy the product, connect them, and that's what you get mm -hmm. pretty much out of the box. And uh, one of our goals was to, uh, to basically take the, the workflow that we found works for our teams and put them into the product as the default workflow. So mm -hmm. this is the standard workflow. You create an issue, uh, you start working on the code. Uh, you, you create a branch, then you start working on the code. Uh, you create a pull request and then get the code merged. Right? So, um, and we think that will work for 70 to 80% of the teams out there. And if your process differs a little bit, there are a lot of plugin points in Stash where you can customize and slightly modify the workflow to make it work for you. We had this uh, at lastnet.com slash git the, where the, all the Git workflows are presented by Atlassian, it's, it's a very popular page in, in our company. So could you explain why that would be, what you have on this page? So on atlassian.com slash git, uh, we have, first of all, a, a simple Git tutorial that explains all the Git commands for mm -hmm. you, um, how to get started with Git. But even more important is that we explain different workflows that you can apply. And we found that uh, talking to a lot of customers who are starting to adopt Git, um, finding the right workflow is the biggest challenge for them, right? Like, what works at the moment? How does the workflow that I have at the moment map to what I want to do in Git? And, uh, and you said, like, a lot of um, teams still use the old workflow when they move to Git, and then it, it takes them a while to yeah. adopt the new, more powerful workflows? Yeah, it really, it really takes three to six months, and we saw that at the teams at Atlassian, uh, even the Stash team before we had Stash and started mm -hmm. to adopt Git, uh, on, on Fisheye and Crucible and worked on that too. Um, it took us probably like three to six months to really understand the benefits and, and identify a workflow that, that works for us. That's simple enough as well because um, a lot of the teams started with more complicated workflow. We started with cherry picking and uh, now you have all this power. It's like, well, how can I use all this power that is in Git to, uh, to create this awesome workflow? The problem is if you make it too complicated, your developers struggle to understand it and it just as the project grows, it just becomes really complicated to manage um, or the different cherry picking or like too many branches mm -hmm. if you have a complicated branch system. Right? Okay. So, so the microsite aims to explain uh, from the simplest workflow to the more complicated and you can read through it, see what makes sense and then try to adopt it as well. Okay, let's finish with talking about some features that you'll have in uh, Git. Now, as we have this other interview already, I know side-by-side -side divs, what is it? So Cypress Side Diffs um, helps to actually do the code review better. Most mm -hmm. of the developers, they're really, they're used to having Cypress Side, Side Diffs in the IDEs, so they would like to see that as part of the code review process as well. And we already had it in, in Crucible for a while, and therefore it was one of the top feature requests for Stash mm -hmm. requests as well. So that will come with the next release of Stash. Uh, in addition to that, we're also going to add change set comments so that you can uh, have discussions on individual change sets as mm -hmm. well. Okay, so let's see what uh, what comes next for Stash. Um, is there anything to come for Fisher uh, Crucible, or is that uh, something that is dawned to to die because Subversion slowly dies? Yeah, no, the um, the the old Steve Jobs quote before he unfortunately passed away, but uh, I'm not sure if you remember that in one of the keynotes he said. Uh, the reports of my death are greatly exaggerated, mm. uh, and so are the reports of the death of Subversion. So Subversion is going to be around for uh, many years to come, in particular in larger companies. Uh, even though there might be pockets of Git, we actually have a lot of customers who use both. They have their old projects on Subversion, there's no need to migrate them if, 
if they're there and you don't do much maintenance on it, you just commit once a while. There's no need to go through the hassle potentially and change all the infrastructure. Um, so we, we're still investing in sub, uh, into Fisher and Crucible. And we saw the release, uh, releases over the last year. There were some amazing releases, mm -hmm. uh, making it look more like the Atlassian suite. It will look more like Stash in the future as well. And uh, we're working on performance improvements because Fish and Crystal are already very feature rich. So yeah. a lot of the functionality uh, that they have, but so you want to catch up with Stash as well, stuff yeah. the code review. So they're here to stay for the for the foreseeable future. There is this one product that we talked uh, yesterday, and I wanted to do some uh, advertising for them, uh, although it's not an Atlassian product. Um, if I had, if I was this big company having these pockets of Git and uh, having Subversion still like a, as my main uh, system, you talked about a system that could let me use both at the same time and sync all code changes in both systems. Yep. How does that work? What, what is the name of the product? Uh, tell us a little bit about so it. So there's a plugin on the marketplace for Stash. Mm -hmm. It's actually one of the most popular plugins. I think it's called the um, SVN Mirror plugin for Stash. Mm -hmm. And what it allows you to do is uh, two things. You can, first of all, choose to just do a simple import mm -hmm. of a subversion repository into Stash. Which is free, right? Did, did mm. I understand that? Or, um, so or it was free and we don't know whether it is still? It, yeah. Exactly. It, it used to be free. I'm not quite sure actually how the uh, licensing now works. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's, that part is still free. Uh, some other tools or plugins, add-ons, they opted to have a freemium model. So mm -hmm. some of the functionality is free. Some of them is, is paid for. Okay. Can import from Subversion? Yeah. And the, uh, the second part is that you can keep your Subversion repository in sync with your Git repository. And that's really handy. Isn't that complicated like hell? Yeah, this is why those guys <laughs> have been working with Subversion for many years before they uh, wrote a library called SVN Kit. So mm -hmm. they're they experts in Subversion and version control and then they wrote this tool for uh, for Git as well. And it and actually works. And then, yeah, they have a standalone tool as well. Um, it's called SubGit and uh, then we talked to them and they said, yeah, we're excited. Uh, we'd like to make that more accessible to Stash customers. So they wrote a plugin uh, that basically includes Subgit in the plugin for Stash. So right. if you're watching this video and you have um, Subversion right now and you want to try out Git, you can use this plugin. Maybe it costs something, but at least you can kind of have your Git sit there exactly. and everyone can start using it without any problem for you. Exactly. Right? It's, uh, it's great to try it out and see, see how it works. Uh -oh. uh, and furthermore, if you actually want to do the migration, as part of the migration, you have to change your, your build system and a lot of other systems that currently rely on Subversion, right? So mm -hmm. that's not going to happen overnight. Uh, and this tool enables you to like start working with Git and then slowly migrate over. So you already have your Git running. You can start to migrate your builds from Subversion to Git one at, one at a time. You don't have to do it all at once in one big rush. So uh, that tool is perfect for... Awesome. Anything else you, you want to tell the world that is uh, new about uh, DevTools? I think in, in general, we're pretty excited at Atlassian about DevTools. There has been a lot of movement and uh, our mission is to uh, help teams build software better. Right? And that's the, the goal we want to, we're looking at integrating all our tools really tightly together to create one process and make it really easy for software teams to collaborate. Thank you so much for your time. No